Hey everyone, welcome back to After the Island. Before we get into the Messy Mitch episode, I wanted to take a chance to shout out our sponsors. So stay on track with Magic Spoon. It's cereal that tastes like your childhood faves, but with more protein and less sugar. If you're a regular listener, you already know that I am I have a high obsession with Magic Spoon. I literally tell everyone about it. I won't shut up about it. My favorite flavor is peanut butter. I'm not usually a peanut butter girly, but it is so good. And the crunch that Magic Spoon has is just, it's so satisfying. I snack on it all day. I was going to show you guys a box, but I already finished it. So they do have a variety pack, four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. And this pack has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five net grams of carbs. There's only 140 calories a serving. It's high protein, has zero grams of sugar, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. Go to magicspoon.com slash ATI to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code ATI at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to get your next delicious bowl of high protein cereal at magicspoon.com slash ATI and use the code ATI to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode and please never leave us. I'm so obsessed. Another quick shout out to AG1. I gave AG1 a try because I was taking so many supplements and so many vitamins that I, I couldn't I just needed a single solution that supported my entire body and my nutritional bases every day. I wanted better gut health because your girly has that problem, a boost of energy and immune support because I've been getting sick a lot. And I wanted something that tasted good because I have had it with chalky vitamins. Yuck. (laughs) A la AG1. It was designed with ease in mind so you could live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. Let's be honest. My Every facet of my life is already complicated. I don't need my vitamins to be. So thank you, AG1. AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and high-quality whole food sourced ingredients. They boost my energy, improve my mood, and even give me healthier-looking skin and hair and nails. AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash ATI. That's drinkag1.com slash ATI. Check it out and let's get into it with Mitch. Welcome back to After the Island. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Alex. And we have Mitch with us today. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? We are so excited you're here. One of my first questions for you is, uh, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? (laughs) It's actually, honestly, never, never, never. (laughs) (laughs) How did you end up on the show? Did you apply? How did the casting process look like in the UK? Um, So for years, like everyone was just calling me a Love Island guy because I fit the profile apparently so i don't i don't know how i don't see it but um the winter love island season i flew out for two weeks then i didn't get on and then on the way back from the fly i spoke to one of the producers and just said and i was i was not bothered about going and i thought i flew out to south africa which were 11 hours from where i live and i was thinking this is and then obviously two two weeks in isolation and then flew back and i thought i'm not really up for it and then i, I just i just thought sorry i'll just i'll just try again and obviously spoke to one of the main producers and they just said, Mitch, why not just apply this time? So they sent me the form via Instagram. I applied, then obviously went on as an original. It was the best season I've ever watched. And I don't really? know if you definitely haven't seen any of our videos, but I would bring you up all the time <laughs> when relating things back to what was happening in our season. And I was just like, no, everyone needs to watch Messy Mitch. Like it's the funniest yeah. thing ever. <laughs> Love that, like, love that. For anyone that hasn't watched UK, explain how you got the term messy bitch. Uh, yeah. So Islanders and Whitney, they gave me the name. And I think it just came because I'm just extremely indecisive. And I'd say one thing and then I'd do another. Then I'd do one thing, but I'd say another thing. So I, my path was like that. I think I just lost my mind whilst I was in there. So it made very good TV, I was told, uh, but I was just being very messy, obviously. I tell one girl that I was going to pick her at the recoupling. Then the next day, being decisive, I changed my mind. I'd say the exact same to that girl. 
and then pick that girl anyway and, oh, and then go back to that girl. That play sent me insane. I, I, it was chaotic. None of this was producer influenced? I can't answer stuff like that now. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the season was movie night. Oh, yeah. Take right. us through movie night. <laughs> so obviously, because you've been on, haven't you? I feel like you can agree with me on this. When you're in the villa, unless it's just me being messy, Mitch, I forget things I do. So I, I do things and then I am so sure I've not done that. So I just stick with what's up there. And then I realize I'm moving out. I've done it. So uh, obviously, um, initially I was coupled up with Molly for the first four days. It was like, obviously I spoke to my family after and it was like a match made in heaven. It's going to be perfect. If everyone going to say we're going to win. And then my best mate in the villa and obviously out now who is Zach came in yeah. six foot guy is, He's like sculpted from God. He's got cheekbones and a jawline of a God. And he came in and nicked her off me. And I just couldn't handle that. So uh, I just went, oh, I betrayed Zach and I snaked Zach a tiny bit to try and get Molly back because I was here for love and not for friendships and stuff. <laughs> Didn't get her back. And then started to get to know a couple of girls. Weren't really bothered until obviously I became it. And that's when I started to generally like girls again. But at the time, it was just kind of about surviving to a certain degree because I'd. I did want to find love. I generally went in there for love and um, I kind of got to know Molly and because Molly was generally my type, the other four or five girls at the time that was in there wasn't really my type. I friend zoned all of them at the start and then I had to start backtracking to like stay and try and survive and wait for another person that was compatible. So I got to know every single bombshell that came into that villa. I mean, that was a huge digression, but basically moving out would just literally me talking to all the boys that are still a lot of people would say we'd not be mates because I snaked him but we're very close mates all the boys still like the last yeah. eight lads that were in there um, but I'd probably like use myself at the time and like be like your relationship's not the best ours would be better or something and you know looking back at it, I've, I've always looked at them guys that do stuff like that and for don't like them but I turned into it whilst we were in the villa which were wasn't planned I can say that well, sometimes you get in there and anything you have it is set in your mind that you're going to do or doesn't, not going to do, it just goes right out the window. Yeah. It's not real life. It's not like you can do go on a date with a girl, come back home, reevaluate, go, right, this is it now. It's like I have, you have a chat with someone, then you walk off to the other side of the garden and they're still there. And it's like, how can you mentally process trying to get this girl to like you or to be compatible, you know, like without overthinking it? And it's, it was, mental like you know trying to be composed in there for sure were you just a full love island programmed robot by the end <laughs> where you went out to a bar when you got home and you were pulling girls for chats I, to be fair to be fair i think i remember being in a bar in sheffield the city i live in and i, I was just sat in a bar and i'm thinking do i go up to how do i do this now do i say can i pull you for a chat and then do I go to the beach or after and tell them if I like them or not? <laughs> Honestly, it, it takes, it, it takes um, I reckon, a good month to like get yourself back in order because obviously your sleeping patterns are completely different as yeah. well. Like, going to yeah. sleep at 4, 5, 6 a.m. every night. So, And it's different. So that took time as well. So I, I can say that my game is, is, is probably back now. Was it, to be fair, whenever it, I never really had game in the villa anyway, so it, it just disappeared for two and a half months. So it's, it's <laughs> somehow reappeared now. So, yeah. so what is your status now? Me and Ella B did break up uh, maybe a month after we left. Ella lives down south and car journey wise, I think about four hours, train about two and a half hours. And I'm stupidly busy. Ella's stupidly busy. And I think I, it came to a conclusion of, this isn't going to work. So I I instigated the, us breaking up and obviously Ella soon, obviously soon agreed with it um, because realistically, as, as beautiful as she is, and I will say this, Ella is probably the most down-to-earth girl I've met. Like being coupled, like being actually in a situation, relationship, whatever, she hasn't got a bad bone in her body. It's just, we, we were never going to work. So I just, I think we had to cut it off and we didn't click like we wanted to. Like we lived in the villa together, and we not not exactly had to get to know each other, but we wanted to, and it were easy. Now I'm all over England doing club appearances and doing work, Ella's at events and stuff. It's just like it's just mathematically doesn't make sense how it could work. So I attend it. 
on the on the flip side, a lot of people want to know what the deal is with Abby. Are you guys still in contact or are you guys dating? A lot of people think what's the status <laughs> with that? Um, obviously, Abby is under the same management as me. So me and Abby get on completely fine. We did have a really good connection in the villa. Like we generally did like, yeah, I, literally that. And I see her at events all the time. Obviously, I put a story on and Abby put a story on our Instagrams. We went to a red carpet event and we were seen together. But that's just normal. Like, I'll never rule out the future, but right now we're just, just friends, I think. I hope. I think. I don't know. You think? <laughs> I'll leave it to your imagination. No, no, we are. We are. We're on very good terms. Obviously, me and Abby did end very badly. Like, I couldn't apologize more on how badly I handled the situation. It's just messy Mitch being messy Mitch. But um, me and Abby are on really good terms. She's a really nice girl as well. Um, but yeah, we're under the same management. We see each other all the time. Uh, nothing's happening right now. But like I say, we don't know what will happen in the future. Alex, this is where the messiness comes in. Yeah, I see, it. I see it. I see it. I see it. I like to get, no, this is this is just me being great TV. I like to give you cliffhangers. That's what I'm here for. What was your favorite messy Mitch moment? Okay, I'm trying to think of this one. Maybe I don't. I don't. Oh God, this this just so many. <laughs> I'm too iconic. I'm just too good at it now. Don't. I'm trying to. I'm li- really trying to dig deep with this one. Uh, probably roll the tapes. I said roll the tapes to uh, to Abby, and the producers rolled the tapes, and Abby was right. I to the honestly to this day, I generally didn't think I said that. I've never rewatched an episode of Love Island in my life. I rewatched it. I appreciate that. I just honestly, I just I just remember like watching it. I think it was the Grafties, and I was just watching it. I was going, "Oh my god, I did say that." I'm like, a, I'm just a wrecking ball because I, if I don't think I said it, I will stand by that. So it's like, like even if people tell me I did, I'm like, I didn't because I don't think I did. So that's that's the answer. Interested in this logic. Honestly, the editors had a field day with me. Honestly, they loved it. They loved editing me the best way, the best way they could like. So I did watch a uh, podcast and they said like, I think people are going on and uh, kind of putting a guard up because they were like, I know I'm getting filmed millions of people watch this tv show in all over the world mm-hmm. clearly and i just watched that and i thought i'm gonna go in with no filler i'm not gonna think this camera's there i better act the way i do i'm just gonna act on instinct and just just mm-hmm. do what i should do like so it it was never a plan to be a memorable character as much as of a, obviously some of the other other islanders have said it's just i would just be messy because i could i had never been in a situation where i lived in a villa with six, seven girls, six, seven guys for two months, it took its toll on me. So by the end of it, where it got worse is where I think, not not exactly my mental health, but just my mental state of how I'm able to cope with this anymore because eight weeks is a long time. Well, in total, without my phone, 10 weeks without my phone, without outside world contact, spoke to mum mom and dad for 10 minutes in that time and it does take its toll. Like, I think if I had a bit of outside world contact, spoke to my family here, there and everywhere and just got back to a bit of normality. I'd have handled the situations better, but I was just just in a bubble, losing my mind. I mean, that's the way they get you because mm. you don't have your friends that have known you for years and years and years to kind of Talk give you, you that kick ledge. back, yeah. being like, bro, what the fuck? Like, yeah, literally. I mean, the, the boys did do that after the movie night, which were a bit weird because... It, w- it was weird, though, because the boys generally just didn't care. Like, they were all laughing and they didn't really care. And then the next day, they did care. And I was like, don't contradict, you. don't contradict yourself. You either care or you don't. So that's why I- I've digressed onto this. But that's why I didn't understand when Zach called me Snake Boy at the time. Because they didn't, that night, the movie night, they generally didn't care because they, they knew I was having a hard time getting to know people. And I was just doing, I just going to the worst possible places to get results type of thing so the boys were cool, cool about it the next day they somehow hated me and I was like what like who's told you to hate me when you didn't mind it that night but it's what it is what did you think when you found out that Scott was on the US show I was happy for him Obviously, me and Scott have a really really strong the definition of love hate relationship is just me and Scott 
Like, we get on really well, but we will clash. We always do. Like, we'll get on so well. He's low tempo, very quiet, chill. I'm very high tempo, 24-7. And he'll, he'll have his moments with his great one-liners. When he went on, I thought, like, go for it. I'm, I'm happy for him. Like, anyone from my season, if they succeed, I want them to. Like, if they get, like, a career move and that, I don't... Anyone could have done it. I saw a lot of people were giving hate for chasing, obviously, clout and trying to trying to be relevant and stuff like that. But put yourself in Scott's shoes type of thing. If you got the opportunity, you come out single, you go for it. If I came out without Ella, I'd have done the exact same. So you're going to be <laughs> rooting for him in Love Island Games? I don't know if he's going on. Let's take a moment to hear from one of our episode sponsors, Miracle Made. So did you know that the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. They're inspired by NASA, which is awesome. Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. It is self-cooling properties for better sleep quality. Um, They're self-cleaning, which is really interesting. I feel like I've never heard of this before. Uh, The sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresher three times longer than any other sheets. They're luxurious and their comfort and quality is amazing. Um, They don't have the high price tag of luxury brands and they feel just as just as nice, if not nicer. Um, and they've been used by some five-star hotels, which is awesome. So go to trymiracle.com slash ATI. That's trymiracle.com slash ATI to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And when I, and whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift or for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40% and use our promo code ATI at checkout. And you will also get three free bath towels and save an extra 20%. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made today. Let's take another brief moment to hear from another one of our sponsors, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy company that specializes in providing professional therapy to literally anyone that might need therapy. And this doesn't just go for anyone going through a catastrophic event or anything. I really think anyone needs therapy. Alex and I have been using BetterHelp now for like three years. Um, We've been working with them and we think it's amazing. I think anyone can benefit from therapy. It's just kind of like an out, like a source to use to like then or get opinions, like a non-biased opinion on things you're going through in life, whether it's like work, relationships, family. It just helps you stay really grounded and stable. Um, And BetterHelp also has, they're all licensed therapists and you can switch therapists at any time too. And you're doing it from the comfort of your own home which is also really nice and a huge benefit to therapy. Um, So After the Island is sponsored by BetterHelp. And you know what? Get a break with your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash after the island today and get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash after the island. Favorite moment in the villa? My my actual favorite moment was... I'll tell you what, my most enjoyable day was actually my parents coming in and probably my date with Ella B, the like final date, that was like surreal. Like we don't get to drink a lot. We get one drink a day, but because obviously filming and stuff like that, and obviously having to get the scenes right and stuff like that, I I was necking so much champagne. And I would just, I remember sat down, I was thinking, wow, I'm going to have to try and act, not exactly act out the scene, but get the scene correct when I'm drunk. So I had a really good time. And uh, it was probably the date with with obviously Ella B and my mum and dad coming in. That was mental. I've never weirdest feeling I've ever had. Just like seeing my mum and dad walk into the Love Island Villa, and I'm not at that point. I don't think I'd spoken to him for that. That point was about two months. I'm not seeing him. So it's honestly seeing a fish out of water when your yeah. parents walk into the place where you're, you thought no one you know would ever be able to understand what it was. Li- literally, do you know what it was for me? It was. My dad is like a proper not. Like I'm a northerner, but my dad is born and bred from from rags to obviously where he is today. Northern man, never seen him cry in my 27 years of life. We've had numerous dogs that just that obviously died of old age and that we've lost family members and stuff. And he's been the man in the suit, stood there with just facial expression, like don't show emotion. He came in and we sat on the terrace 
and he cried and I was like, what is happening? Is he sweating from his eyes? Because I, I, I was like, because he's not, he's not seen his son for two months, but he being on his screen and it was a moment I'll like never forget. I, I loved it. That's Very really special. sweet. Reality TV will get to you. Do you know, know what? It, to be fair, I was always a tiny bit messy before the villa anyway, but do you know what it was for me? <laughs> In that villa, everyone's six foot and above. So I'm six foot, six foot one. Ty, uh, Monts was six foot. Ty was six one. Scott was six one. Zach was six five. Sammy was six three. My dad came in at five seven. I've not seen a man that small in two months. I was like, <laughs> he came in. I was like, I was like, my dad's got smaller. <laughs> I'm just used to people your height. You, I literally don't see anyone less than six foot for two months. My dad came in. I was like, wow, <laughs> I can't believe it. That's a jump scare, honestly. <laughs> it freaked me out. I couldn't believe how small he were. Mental. Aside from your family, what did your friends think when you got off? Were they like? this was hilarious. This was so you or th- were they like, this was best. <laughs> um, so a lot of my friends are supportive, but they're very truthful as well. They keep me on my toes. So a lot of my mates were just like, Mitch, we loved you up until probably the last week. You just turned into an idiot, like a proper idiot, like the last two challenges. So maybe the graft is where I did that speech, that stupid speech. Uh, I, I just, I think that, that Prosecco got to my head or something. That one glass of Prosecco got to my head that night. And maybe the, um, I can't remember the name of the last challenge where uh, me and Scott were going at each other again. But them two, I think that, uh, they just said like, Mitch, what are you doing? You were, you were, you were funny, memorable, everything great. And then you act like an idiot towards the end. But I think it was my final speech with the boys at the fire pit and Jess on the terrace, what kind of, Turned it round a tiny bit. I think they were like, "Oh yeah, you know what? He's just having moments." But that—that's what's—that's what upsets me a tiny bit. I think people judge me on seeing me for five or ten minutes a day instead of the twenty-four hours I'm there for. So I—I I don't know whether I got. I don't. I don't think I got really got painted a bad edit, but I think it's just I got put out worse than I'm actually. I'm. I'm as a person. I'm like a generally really nice person. I just come across like a. A dickhead, if I can, a knobhead, a knobhead will say, as Scott would say. So, <laughs> well, that's the main reason we started yeah. the show is because of the edits that people get. We started it yeah. to just give everyone a platform to just show who they are and say whatever the, the hell they want to. Mm-hmm. I would, I would say though, I would say Zach. Zach didn't get an edit like it. I think he deserved. I think Zach is as funny. The reason why I meet Zach down so well is because. He has the exact same energy as me, but I don't think that got shown as much as mine did. Because if I think from watching what I've seen back and forth, me and Zach wouldn't be as close as as we are if the edit portrayed him as a person. So he didn't get the he didn't get the one showing his person the best. And I think I just got funny and nasty side, funny and not very nice side of Mitchell. But like, there's actually a genuine nice person like. Roll back, roll back to the first episode. I remember like giving Molly my jacket, trying to be a gentleman, but I don't think any of that stuff got shown. Like I made Abby breakfast. I made Abby breakfast and cups of tea every single morning for two weeks. Don't think that I got shown. I, to be fair, I'm not even going to throw shade on being made because they've only got like segments of you to put in the show. So that I don't think that ITV like and obviously Love Island aren't going out there to make look like a bad person. They're just going out there to make your scene makes sense for that episode and it's just how you're portrayed. Like you are doing that at the end of the day, whether they're missing out 80% of the good things and just putting 20% of the bad things in, it's just how it has to go. So I'm not going to like ever be angry about it. It's just TV. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It is just TV. <laughs> Would you rather be last to go into the beach hut after a really disgusting game or would you rather sit through a recoupling that takes just way too fucking long? I'd rather do the beach up. 100% rather go last in the beach up. I've, honestly, I think I went last in the beach up every time anyway. The... <laughs> <laughs> don't know why. I wonder why. Um, I hated recouplings. I had to have like paracetamol and painkillers because my back were hurting that much being stood up for so long filming because I'd injured my back at the gym years ago and it's never fully recovered and after Casa and more I think we went to bed about 8am and thankfully I was sat down but I was still in pain sat down for that long so 100% I'd take the um, I'd take the last in the beach up <laughs> okay would you rather keep the way you entered the villa in the order you did or would you rather come in at a different time nah come in exactly when I came in do you know 
Yeah, hundred percent. Maybe or first bombshell. First bombshell. I've, to be honest with you, I think if I've got this correct, I think Zach saved me first three episodes. I'm sure because I know Zach wanted Molly, but I came across so abrupt and not exactly like threatening. Like, listen, me and Molly are amazing, pal. You ain't got a chance. And I think I like pushed him back step. So Zach thought I'll play it safe. I think he coupled up with Catherine. Um, and then coupled up with Molly. But I think if Zach was coupled up with Molly, when I wanted Molly, quite a digression, but Molly and Zach are perfect. I think I'd have gone home potentially instead of George. So it's like, it's a butterfly effect, basically. So, yeah, I think I've got to thank Zach in a certain way because I, 100%, and people, a lot of people who obviously follow me and follow the show and stuff still think I've got mm-hmm. feelings for Molly. Zach and Molly are a million times more compatible than me and Molly were. Like, mm-hmm. he didn't get portrayed, he got portrayed like a road man, which he is, and like, just a, a badass type of guy, which he is, but he's got a really soft core, and that's what suits Molly perfect. So yeah, that, I think I could have potentially gone home instead of George. And How did you feel when you saw Molly come back for Casa? I've seen TikToks about that, and I've read the comments, and everyone was like, I hope Molly goes back to Mitch, I hope Molly goes back to Mitch, and stuff like that. But I was gassed, I was really happy with Zach because this wouldn't have been shown. Zach, because Molly came back a week later, for the first four days, Zach was just non-existent to the villa. He just, he, he just was that good. Aww. He didn't know what to do with himself. And he just thought at the time, I've got to get to know KD. Um, and I think them two did get on a bit, but it just wasn't really working. And he was just uncomfortable in the situation. And, that. and I think he was trying to just push past the Molly situation, try his best to forget, but he couldn't. So when Molly came back in, I turned around on, on camera and we're just like, this is perfect for you. I'm so happy. And uh, yeah, I was just really happy that when I saw it because I know that how much them two like each other. Yeah, I was freaking out when that happened. No, my my jaw actually did drop. So do you know in your, in your season, did you speculate about what's going to happen? Or did you get done for it? I did it like every two seconds. I was like, bombshells are coming in tonight. Literally. It's going to be this. It's going to be this. I was like, there's a game today. I know it. Like, just dumping. I swear they would hear me. Well, and then you were mic'd like, up. <laughs> and then they, well, okay. They, I would say it. And then they would like change it a little. Literally. That's what I'm saying. Because every time Scott would speculate the most, uh, no, I, think, I think Scott would speculate about social media platforms a bit. Like, how is it thinking how everyone's doing and stuff? And I personally would speculate about bombshells coming in because I, Whilst doing that, I just cared about bombshells. Didn't care about all else. I wanted to get to know new girls because I, I just, just didn't really generally bother about the other cast at the time. Did like Katie when she came in. She went for Zach. Did fancy Leah. Like I, I, I generally did fancy Leah. Like she was my type, but I'm not uh, Leah's type. And then obviously, at that point, all hope were lost. And then Abby came in and me and Abby did click really well. But um, I keep digressing really badly, by the way, mate. But I'm going to finish it off. And then LAB came in and that all happened. But I'd always speculate stuff to happen to the boys. And then it never happened. So whenever, like, Molly come back or Rita Ora or Neo came, we'd never get that. And then uh, the family's coming in. We were like, yeah, the families are coming. The mum and dads are coming in a week's time. They came in that day. So we never got it right. As, as much as we... As much as we planned it when it was going to happen, we'd never get it right. It's because they probably heard you. We were mic'd up. And I, to be fair, we had code words for bombshells. We used to say blue skies. and that Blue was skies. Code. Blue skies. We had code words for other stuff like if we didn't really want to have the chat, but we had to have the chat and stuff like that. That were called ASICs. So we'd say, oh, can I put you for a chat? We'd like, we like, really? we go, ASICs. I'd go, okay. You get got it. it. Got it. Yeah. Did you have uh, any for sex? Football. Football? Football. Not American football. Not soccer. Oh. Football. So we'd have code words like football. Like I'm not going into too much detail because at the end of the day, I'm talking about, about my boy's uh, sex life and we're not doing that. So, And I'm not going to tell you if anyone had sex because I'm not. All I'm going to say is I didn't. Uh, but yeah, f- football was like if we did bits in the bedroom type of thing, like we'd say, did you, did you, have fo- did you play football last night? I'd go, yeah. I played a little bit of football. Yeah, scored a goal. When you're in bed, and say if you're in the in in bed with your partner and you're kissing, you'll just see the camera turn down and just look at you. 
and you're like moments that that's the equivalent of your mum walking in no oh, totally we had like this little microphone that was like <laughs> right here that. on the headboard yeah and i plucked it off and just flipped it across the room <laughs> And then the next day, there was like two on my bed on each side. <laughs> That's so good. I used to push it in. <laughs> yeah. Literally just shove it in the bed. Does not matter how, how much you whisper, they will put subtitles on your voice. Okay, so what, what's next for Mid? Um, obviously, I'm always up for another show. Um, I can't discuss too much. Nothing's really... So there's always stuff in the pipeline type of thing. See how I'm doing these cliffhangers, by the way? There's stuff in the pipeline... Um, I'm doing a lot of club appearances, so I go to nightclubs, show my face, take photos. Uh, got a couple of collaborations in the in well in the pipeline, and which I've done as well. So, obviously, I think at this point, because I do want to get back on TV, uh, even as an acting thing, I do reality TV as well. Well, more than reality, sorry. Uh, yeah. But I've just got to kind of wait and see because we are coming towards the end of the year. I think they start filming stuff after the year and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we'll just have to see. But if I did know, or if I do know, I'm not going to tell you. We'll just have to wait and see. Would you go back on Love Island? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can tell you I am not going to Love Island games, by the way. Um, no, Me all, neither. All three of us are. We're not. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. I mean, believe it or not, I actually would, was going on the show for love. And if, say, for example, another dating show was to come up, I would potentially, I'd, be, I'd look into it. Uh, Say, for example, if the All-Stars come across the one that's happened in January, if I'm still single by then, um, then I'd look into it. But if I had a relationship, then I wouldn't. It's it's not really about... like I do I do like TV and I do like, obviously, being a person of the TV and stuff, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. It's, it, if my love life at the time makes sense to go on to All-Stars, then so be it but if I'm with someone I'm not yeah. going to I'm, I'm going on for love not for exposure or clout even though even though I dragged it out for eight weeks on that one it's just I, I just generally didn't, didn't plan that so <laughs> oh my god I can't with you <laughs> <laughs> who would you have voted for to win uh, who I voted for was Sammy and Jess um, yeah that's who I thought at the time should have won and which they should have and they did because they were so strong and a couple of days before yeah. um, the final, before I went, um, Zach and, uh, not Zach, Ty and Ella had a massive argument and I kept going up to Ty, stop, the final's in two days, you're going to fumble yeah. the bag, you're going to fumble £50,000, <laughs> stop doing this. Uh, obviously, they had a big argument, they sorted it and, um, yeah, yeah. if they didn't have that, if they didn't have that argument, quite frankly, from social media wise, they are by far the most popular couple. Yeah. And to this yeah, day, like 100%. Their, their numbers is, is bigger than everyone else. I know the social media was implemented for your season. Yeah. We discussed this in one of our previous episodes mm. um, this year, because the U S is still able to do it. Mm. That's um, the stupidest thing ever. That, but, honestly, yeah. because it was going to happen either way. Like they still comment the hate on all your old yeah. pictures. It didn't, it's like Instagram smart enough. And I, I spoke to put, production about this when what do you, what thing would you change when the social media ban because people go on to find love but if they're in for two months they're going to lose their job and if they want to try and capitalize on this you are stopping it from happening basically because you're putting their account on pause and stopping it from growing it generally isn't benefiting anyone yeah no, that's you still you, yeah, you know what i mean you still get well, hate regardless yeah, because the reason they did it for anyone listening is so people wouldn't get like hate they said or like the bullying wouldn't be as big but they can just if anyone's going onto your account to write something mean on right. any of the Love Island posts and they're not there, they're just going to write it on all your old posts. Yeah, it's not going to keep anyone from finding your account. It, it, yeah, exactly. Like, if they do do another series, obviously don't know what's happening with the with the games or the All Stars. They bring it back because uh, for a business side of thing, it is put a massive dent on po- opportunities like people coming out. Who, like even Davide, I'm sure Davide came out to a six hundred thousand pound deal because he was on the. You yeah. know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and like, I met Davide. Yeah, he's a gorgeous man. Yeah, I met him at uh, Fashion Week last year. Oh, yeah. Got a I picture. Got a that. picture with him. <laughs> I've not met him yet. Yeah, I think he saw me take a photo of him, and he <laughs> caught me. Like he looks right at me, and I put it on our podcast story, and people were like, "Oh my god, you got caught so bad!" And I had to go up to him after and be like. Like I semi explained myself. Like, you were like, I'm like I was I'm on the island too. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, I was uh, I was on the way to Scotland um, 
for a club appearance on Friday and there was I was on a table on a train with three of my mates and there was just a woman like that with a phone at the at the other side of the train just recording me and my mate were losing his head. And it was like just ask for a photo, going up to it, just ask for a photo, just ask for a photo. And I like to my mate, I was like, leave it normal. Like it's weird how it's normal people recording you just look and go, right, whatever. Yeah, like I know exactly what you're I doing. Think, literally, I think like now I just I'm when I'm out and about in somewhere public, I just stay in my zone and just keep walking, do my thing. And my mates like watch the surroundings and people go, Oh my god, that's Messi Mitch from Love Island. And then they'll either ask for a photo or just shout my name. But they'll clock it as I've walked past. But I, I'm just like tunnel vision, uh-huh. just going to my destination and just ignoring it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I love this. Yeah. Oh, so I'm, not, I'm, I'm really humble, me. Honestly, I'm really humble about it. Oh, it's been so fun. Yeah. Leave us with one last messy Mitch bombshell cliffhanger. Okay. Be yourself. <laughs> give me, give me a yourself. second. Give me a second to get into character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just start acting. Wait. All right. I'm on. Messy Mitch is here. Um, and scenes, and scenes. go <laughs> right uh, this is my cliffhanger I don't have one would you ever date a fan um, I think I'd date someone that I knew before the show because a lot of people a lot of girls approach you because of your clout so the clout chasers type of thing so I, you'd have to be really smart about this so if I was to date a fan I'd want to know them I'd want to know that I got on with them before I got this social media platform and yeah. this potential Z list of fame that I've got. So it wouldn't just be a random, I, I, I couldn't ever date them now. Makes it's sense. not me just saying like I'm too famous that. for you. It's just like, I want someone that's stupidly genuine towards me. Yeah. Like just for me and, and not attracted to me because of what I've been like on TV and how I'm known me before that. So it, it mm-hmm. but never say never. Yeah. Cliffhanger. Mitch, thank you so much thank for you. coming on today. Yes, we We've really appreciate you. So much fun talking to of you. Course. Our audience is gonna be so excited about this. They're already so excited about it. Yeah. Um, to anyone watching, we will link Mitch's social medias down below so you can mm-hmm. click his Instagram. Do you have TikTok? I do have TikTok, yeah. It, do you have TikTok? Oh yeah, we'll link that as well. That's messy Mitch Zero. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> just TikTok. Oh, TikTok and just my yeah. Instagram. Um, Instagram. Probably in the next yeah. month or what two, I'll probably get a YouTube account. Thank you. And Thank if you. you're ever in LA, you'll have to let us know. All right, nice one. Yeah. Take care. Later. Bye. <laughs>